Yeah, I think no one else coming in, so I'll just start lah. Okay, so right, yeah, winter is coming, and then definitely, uh, coming back here, right, before I go into details about how we can all 100% pass our uh, BD, uh, BD uh, operation for IGB audit itself. So just to recap back a little bit, right? Um, over here is just a summary that you can expect from uh both PBOX and NCR projects for BD criteria. And then uh like what I mentioned, lah, we still have almost similar scope. I think the main changes coming from previous summer is on the portfolio design framework. And then yeah, other than that, it's actually similar, just maybe there are new trackers and all those things. So I will directly go into the what then eventually hope to allocate a little bit more time for QA as well. We'll go one by one. So basically, this is how I usually do for all the criteria. So you can also see at the top right corner, I will put down the which tab that you can actually refer to. I also attach the link over there. So for what this one is for the business, uh, business model canvas itself, right? So generally over here, we'll be expecting 100% completion and then make sure to synergy with the other three functions, which is IGV, PM, and FL. So IGV side will be more like the key activities uh, or like the value propositions and all those things that you want to work on. PM side will be more on like the human resource structure that you need, especially you need to know your HR gap itself and all those things, how much that project team can run uh, on top of the key activities that are already originally planned, right? The thing is for FL. So FL basically is on the core structure and revenue stream so that you can still manage um, to understand how can your uh, B2B revenue goal actually contributes to FL revenue stream at the same time, how do you still want to make sure that the profitability of your sales portfolio is there? All right, so I think that would be the similar part of things. So I wouldn't go into detail. And other than that, I think this one is a bit more different. This one is on the project sales GBA wise. So in summer, we actually change it, right, to have a project sales distribution state sheet. Same as <clears throat> this winter where I actually already duplicate a new uh, tracker over here. So there's a new winter version, sign on that, not update in the summer one already because there's no more months for you to update, right? So um, over here, <coughs> one changes is also, it has incorporated AY and MYB uh, partnerships together. Uh, not to say that it is actually combined together, but um, just mentioning that this project sales distribution sheet, you can update both for AY and uh, MYB partners so over here also expecting 100% completion for the budgeted goal and then um, please make sure that only touch on the yellow tabs that I highlighted already because the rates are already auto formulated so make sure that um, your monthly goals are tightly with the total sales goals that you are expecting now because um, over here this tracker you just need to update the monthly one <clears throat> and then the it will it will auto pop up on the uh, on the total one now. yeah so make sure also the thought process of setting sales goals is not saying like, okay, uh, uh, I suka suka happy and then I set like a 5K or like if you're Chinese, you like number eight, right? Then you set like eight, 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 eight K or something like this, right? So make sure that the sales goal is actually based on number one, how to sustain your project and your LC. Number two, how do you wish to align on the profit strategies as well? Because over here, I also put down uh, for crowdfunding and then uh, maybe all the other profit strategies that BD will usually do. Yeah, so just to make sure on that. And then, um, yeah, coming to this one is a bit new, right? So for portfolio design, I believe actually the, uh, it's not really new at all. Like you have seen this uh, kind of design framework before. It's just, it's not really utilized in DMF. But over here, I, uh, the reason why I added in is because I find the thought process very important on how you want to align your BMC into a like deliverables portfolio kind of idea before you go into uh, doing your proposal. So this will be very helpful for you to actually plan out what kind of deliverables that you would like to propose to partners. There's a reason why I actually incorporate that into uh, the proper design uh, and then also on top of that, it will be on the pricing part where it will also uh, be like kind of like the cost structure is incorporated inside already. So yeah, basically new structure, uh, new winter version is basically already incorporated the cost structure. So don't worry about it, but just make sure that you are able to understand first what is the pain and gain that you want to tackle. That should be your value proposition of that portfolio itself. And then on top of that, what is the deliverables or key activities that you would like to propose to your partners? 
and then the KPI because that's what partners would like to see and then also partners commitment and pricing. So basically, if you have all of this in place, you are already complete. You already completed everything from the DMF planning up to the proposal, up to even your MOA in the future if you are ready to sign with like the partners that want to have this kind of deliverable. So yeah, basically, make sure that if you want to plan all of this, you need to align with IGV and FL as well because if the the key activities, right, IGV side did not align, then IGV will not be running it. Same goes to for FL side. If the pricing is not aligned, then it means that it's not aligned with the budget. So with that, I think this one is the pro uh, proposal folder itself. Right? So right now, me and Natalie is still coming up with the new winter version of the proposal template. It will look very pretty, trust me. Yeah, and trust Natalie as well. So another one is also make sure that um duplicate one folder for your LC or even your SU. And then make sure 100% completion also. La. Yeah, so like what I mentioned, utilize the portfolio design to map out your portfolio and proposed deliverables first. So it will ease the process when you are drafting out your proposal to partners. Okay. So on top of that, this one is just a partner tracker where it's the same la, 100 completion for all the previous partners, partners that uh, is the existing and also the partners that you would like to re-raise in winter. And then uh, no need to put new leads here first. Yeah, just to make sure that all the partners' details are 100% aligned with Hotspot. Lah. I think this is the most important one, right? Because we will still like to track on Hotspot for any potential ER principles violation and all those things. Yeah, so that's the part. And then on top of that market research, um, uh, basically I just take in the previous templates from Summer as well. So you guys should be quite uh, familiar with it already. Just make sure that you guys implement it. Uh, and then, yeah. So one LC is supposed to have 20 pieces of research. La. If you have 20 pieces, then most likely you will have more than 20 leads already. Okay. So yeah, basically make sure that um utilize this for your pre-attraction focus as well so that you can understand your external markets better. Yeah. So yeah. So generally, lastly, for hotspot, um, because all of this DMF will be more like in the tracker itself, right? So definitely it will not automatically link to Hotspot and will still require everyone's support to actually update and align the data with Hotspot to make sure that all the data is accurate when we want to fetch out anything from Hotspot as well. So all the funnel, all the progress itself, sales implementation and everything like leads, meeting, MOA, sales one, make sure to record it in both DMF uh, partner tracker and also the market research tool itself. And then also, uh, for the hotspot link uh, over there. La. Yeah, so make sure that is tally because we will check for both hotspot and the DMF together as well. So lastly, I think just before I close this and go directly into Q&A, um, for opening audit, uh, it might be very tedious because it's planning. So I, I believe everyone here already understands planning process is actually quite uh, hectic, right? And then also quite detailed. But eventually just remember that uh, make sure you have your purpose an objective on why do you want to do all those uh, planning for BD side because eventually all the things, all the criteria, it is revised or even there for a reason. So try to see the objective and how do you want to make sure that you can have even a more proper sales implementation so that you are more effective in doing sales because eventually if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail as well. So yeah, I think that's all for BD. I will go directly into Q&A or like you guys can just digest a little bit first. Huh? Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I, I think we have uh, a question. Okay. Wait. Ah, who is talking? I'm so sorry. Ah, I need to talk. Hold on. Ah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> can I have a mini tracker somewhere? <laughs> the tracker. Okay. Okay. Okay, wait, uh, hold on. I need to find the tracker first. Okay, where's the tracker again? Okay, okay, it's still. Oh, sorry, yeah, hold on a minute, yeah, guys. I forgot to open. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, please go ahead. Okay, so uh, actually my question is mostly for the partner tracker where um, Alongside the FPs we have uh, for the certain IGB projects, do we also have to include all the school partners and also the uh, learning partners we had for that project? Or is it only we include the financial partners for summer? Uh, 
who. Yeah, so basically it's more on like what kind of like partnerships needed to be included over here, right? If I get the uh, question correctly. Yeah, yeah. In the partners tracker, is it only the FPs or we also need to include all the SP and all the LP? Okay, yeah. So uh, I would suggest to include everything. Yeah, because eventually it will help us better to understand like uh, for these partnerships, eventually uh, it will be a centralized like tracker to make sure that we have all the partnerships uh, documented. Lah. So yeah, I think over here I also mentioned lah, uh, potentially for all LP, OP, FP, and SP sites. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then uh, another one is like the, uh, not all the projects have FPs. Mm. So uh, do we only put down the FP we, re I mean the potential partners we uh, wish to like uh, bring in from summer and then also include the learning partner and school partner or just include the learning partner and school partner? Okay. Include the potential one or no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think for this question itself, I wish to maybe clarify a little bit more when mentioning like not all projects will be having FP itself is memang that is the project direction of not having FP or you are planning to have one FP towards like maybe a, a few projects itself. Mm, can you uh, maybe rephrase the ah, okay, sentence? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so because I think for some LCs, what I know is generally they will have one FP secured and then let's say the FP would like to ask, uh, would like to have a at K partnerships. So the LCs will actually um divide the at K to maybe four, four projects that they are running. So maybe one project will have two K of uh FP sales one, etc. Like this. Yeah, or it's just memang for that project, even in the budget itself, you are not planning to allocate any FP amount. Oh, I see. No, I think it's uh, the the uh, sales one will be like centralized towards the product we are getting the sales one for. So let's say it's for COP, then it's only will be for COP. So let's say like Echo doesn't have any sales one, then we won't like distribute it mm -hmm. from COP to Echo. Yeah. Okay. Understand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for this, I will still suggest to, um, yeah, I think I will still suggest to put in because eventually, um, it's a little bit hard to say like whether are we going to eventually secure that partner or not. So most of, most likely for those that are still haven't signing MOA, we can call them as potential and everything. And on top of that, for me, my suggestion is still to have like at least some FP revenue for each of the projects because understanding from our cost analysis about MYV itself, where actually one MYV will require about 250 uh, ringgit Malaysia for the cost to run a project. So that's the part on saying like if we are just running uh, MYVP, that's definitely not enough to cover the project cost. And eventually, I still think that um, we can strive for like more partnerships so that we can have both like financial stability and then more value added into the project itself. Lah. Yeah, yeah. But I think just to answer back the question itself, I would still suggest to put down and then eventually it may be a potential re-raise partner or anything in the future as well. Lah. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Sylvia. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Right. While I'm waiting for more people to ask, then you can also, uh, yeah, let me type down. Yeah, this one is the uh, 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 spreadsheet, by the way. Okay, we have about three more minutes. So 
not much time. Uh, anything else that you guys would like to clarify? Because I think it's very important. Yeah. And looking at the timeline, you guys do not have much time as well. Sorry, I want to ask something. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, Xin Hui, yes. Hey, sorry, Xin Hui. I think you are breaking off a little bit. Is it my end? Okay. Uh, maybe you can repeat again. Oh, uh, is it clear now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clear now. Okay, uh, so let's say we have five projects, but then we are only finding FP for two projects. So do we need to like do the proposal for, I mean, can I, can we just do the two proposal only? Okay, yeah. Okay, I understand. Um, I mean, if that's the, uh, if that's the direction that, uh, according to even like IGB side for the key activities and also the FL side, uh, that do not allocate any other B two B for the rest of the three projects. Then, um, yeah, you can just focus on, like, doing the two proposals lah. But like what I mentioned earlier on, I will not suggest that because eventually I still think that um it will be more sustainable if every project can have a split of B two B and B two C revenue itself. So I think just take note on that lah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Thank you, Darling. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. Closing soon, I think. Can keep the questions coming. Or if still thinking, I think you guys can just type into it and type me. Then I'll answer it uh, in written form after that. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh the sorry, I think you're a bit soft. Can you repeat? Hello? Is it ah, better yeah. now? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's better. Can can should continue. I should I just type in? Ah, you can just say it's okay. Uh, okay. Uh no, basically it's the, the portfolio design framework. So like how how should we be uh align with FL? Huh? Because uh is it based on just the sales goal? Ah, okay. Yeah, good question. So I think for this, right, definitely it should be aligned with like the deliverables pricing on saying like um it should align with like the total FP. Another thing is on the if there's any cost, right? If if you see over here, I also put down like what will be the pricing. And at the side, I actually indicate one is for the cost structure. So make sure that those are also taken into account in the expenses in the budget. 